Hello everybody and welcome to episode 22. I know it's been a little while, we've had a little gap in between episodes 22 and 21. You can go to the community tab on my YouTube channel or to my Patreon and uh, I've, I've written a bit about why that is and some of the other work I've been doing. In the meanwhile, I don't want to take up too much time in the video explaining that. Um, go look in those places if that's of interest to you. But here we are in episode 22 and as I said last time, we're going to be taking a look at throwing uh, the objects that we can now carry around the game. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a couple of modifications to our entity object in order to allow for us to make this change. So I'm going to come into entities, grab P entity, our trusty um, all encompassing entity object and go down to the variable definitions window where we're going to add yet more ways to customize exactly how uh, each entity should perform. I'm going to add two new uh, definitions to this window. I'm going to add entity throw break. Uh, that's going to be a boolean uh, which by default will be false. Um, that's to tell us whether or not we're if we can pick up and throw this entity, whether it should be destroyed on landing, you know. The other one we want to add is entity throw distance. Uh, that's going to be a real and it's going to be 52 by default just because that's the value I worked out as a reasonable distance to be able to throw a thing. That um, is pretty much what it says on the tin allows us if we want. I don't think I actually anywhere on my base code make any distinctions between any objects in terms of how far they can be thrown but if you want to you might want to make it so a rock can be thrown further than a pot or a bomb or so on and uh, so forth um, I actually keep it pretty uniform just because I think I, I just kind of prefer that um, it's up to you so as we know by now anything we put in here is inherited by all of our different types of entity so if we come into o pot and we go to variable definitions we'll see it now also has entity throw break uh, and entity throw distance at those default values. I do want to add one more variable to p entity but not in the definitions window where we uh, expose these values for um, other objects we're going to go into the create event where we have our entity essentials our z equals zero flash lifted and so on and add another um, variable in here which is thrown that's going to be uh, zero as well or rather i suppose it's going to be false uh, strictly speaking since it's going to be either false or true um, it's generally a good habit if you know something is only ever going to be false or true to write it as false or true that's one of our uh, I think Pixelated Pope's uh, 10 game maker commandments or, or however many there are. Um, it's a, a good habit to get into. Probably Lifted should be that as well, but we'll, we'll leave that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is make some modifications to our player's free state where we are able to activate things and so on. When, when we press the activate key, we want to check to see if we are holding an object and um, we press the activate key and we uh, don't necessarily want... So the next thing we're going to do is modify our player's free state um, in the area where we press the activate button. So if I go to scripts and open up uh, player states and go to player state free, uh, it's this script we want to modify uh, down here in our activate key logic. Okay, so we can see how it currently works. We have uncharacteristically commented this pretty well. Um, and uh, written exactly what uh, this does. So we check for an entity to activate. There's nothing or there is something, but it has no script role. Otherwise, there is something and it has a script. Activate. And if the thing we activate is an NPC, make it face towards us. So what we want to do is modify this by moving uh, the, the bit where we would roll into a sort of cheeky uh, 2B. Um, if we are carrying something, throw it. Uh, and then, a, well, sorry, a 2A and a 2B, otherwise roll. This is good because we still keep the throwing logic uh, within this kind of bubble that means we can still talk to an NPC while we're carrying an object, which might be relevant, you know, um, in our original quest idea, right? We've got this hat that we want to get back and uh, give it to a character. So while we're holding a thing, we still want to be able to like talk to NPCs and interact with other objects while we are holding an object because it might be relevant or important that we're holding an object, okay? But if we are not in a position to talk to a character, 
then the assumption is that the player wants to throw the object that they're holding or put it down or whatever, right? So that's when uh, we want to do this, okay? We want to do this if we are holding something and um, we want to roll if we're not holding something. So we don't want to roll while we are holding something, that is what happens now and it looks kind of silly. So in here then, this is where we check to see if, if activate is no on or if there is no script um, to call, that's where we would normally do our roll. Uh, I'm gonna write throw something if held, otherwise roll. We're gonna do if uh, global dot lifted, uh, sorry, I lifted, uh, it's whichever instance is being lifted. Um, assuming that does not equal no one, then it means we're carrying an instance, right? Uh, I'm gonna call another script and we're gonna call it player throw. All right, that's just gonna be a weird uh, non-existing variable for now because we haven't made that script yet, but that's where that's where we're gonna perform our throw logic, okay? We're gonna put it into a script for, for ease, okay? And then else um, we can just wrap the roll stuff um, in this else. So if there is an instance that is currently being lifted by the player, then we throw it. Otherwise, um, just do our regular roll stuff. Oh, I'm missing a semicolon there. Let's get that in. All right, so the next thing to do is to actually make this uh, throw script for the player, okay? So I'm gonna go into a player general and make a new script, or a new function, sorry, uh, called player throw. Um, and this function's gonna be fairly straightforward. We're gonna do with uh, global.i lifted. Um, so, you know, because we can assume when we're calling this that there is a, a global I lifted um, and that will have the instance ID of whatever object we're carrying. And we're going to just set a bunch of variables, okay? Um, the most obvious ones are going to be lifted is going to be false because it's not the lifted thing anymore. Um, and persistent is going to be marked false because it's no longer wants to be persistent because we're not carrying it anymore and thrown is going to be true okay that new variable we set up and when that's true um, the entity object is going to end up performing a thing in its step event um, where uh, it, it like moves the object in an arc okay while this is true okay and that that's what's actually going to control the the, the throw movement um, we need to do a bunch of other things in here though, um, uh, for the sake of actually making that movement happen. I'm going to set Z uh, to equal 13, a uh, bit of a magic number. Um, I do that for, well, that's just how I've scripted it <laughs> as a magic number. You might want to make this like a macro, because uh, this particular height of 13 um, comes up quite a bit, both in like when we picked up an object in the first place and we're just carrying it above our head, it's at like height 13 or whatever. And when we throw it, it's at height 13. You might want to write this as like uh, carry height as a macro or something and set that to 13 um, or whatever var uh, value you're using. Um, but I'm just working off my script where this is just a magic number of 13 for whatever reason. Uh, throw peak height uh, is going to equal Z plus 10. Um, throw distance is going to equal entity. Throw distance, that uh, value we set up in entities earlier. Uh, throw distance traveled is going to equal zero, but it's going to store how far uh, the instance has actually been thrown so far. Uh, throw start percent. Don't worry, like I'm making a lot of new variables here we've not seen before, and these just get used in the throw logic. You just wanna wanna have them in for now. Throw start percent is gonna be 13 divided by throw peak height multiplied by 0.5. So how does what what's this? What I've done some maths here. What what does any of that mean? The, the throw start percent is the value we're going to use to determine um, whereabouts in our throw arc um, we are starting because we're going to we're going to create an arc for the in instance that we're throwing. Okay, it's going to move in um, an arc like this, but it's not going to look perfectly like this because if you remember, we have a player and that player is holding the object above their heads, right? So actually. We don't want to do a perfect arc because then the object will move like this and we'll we'll land somewhere that's like you know a, a, a still above the character's head. The the thing wants to move in this kind of arc. Sorry, let's uh, 
Let's use a different color there. It wants to move in this kind of arc and, and still land on the floor, even though it is starting at a height um, that's like above the ground, okay? But uh, since, uh, and we, we've done it in various other tutorials before, this kind of arc is quite easy to calculate using what's called like a sine or cosine, right? Because you can get uh, values back that follow this kind of pattern very easily, like between, moving between 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 1, minus 1 very easily um, in a nice curvy way, very useful for creating these kinds of arc. So we have an easy way to create this kind of arc, which we will do in a bit. Um, since we can do that, um, we want to find a, a quick way to create this kind of arc, okay, that starts, that's the exact same thing, just starts a little bit further along. But how do we know exactly where to start? Well, we know that our peak height, uh, uh, this position here, is, um, and, and we know our starting height here, okay, we know that this is 13, uh, my drawing skills getting rapidly not very good here. We know this is 13, we know that this is uh, 23, because I think it's like 13 plus um, 10, right? Yeah, we've done throw peak height, Z plus 10. Um, since we know that, what we can do is, um, if we take this uh, and divide it by this, that gives us um, the percentage um, uh, along half of the arc, right? Um, so say that that's, it, it looks about like halfway, so say that, that or a bit less than halfway on this rough one we've drawn. So say that that divided by that gives us something like 0 0.4, right? So that, that is like 0 0.4 along the way to that. So all we have to do to work out how far, therefore, that is along the way to the end, the very end position, um, is just multiply that by half, okay? Because if we if we divide that by 2, um, that goes from four, uh, 0 0.4 or 40% along the way to this to 20% along the way to this whole thing, okay? Um, hopefully that made some kind of sense. <laughs> So we take 13 divided by uh, the throw peak height, giving us um, the percentage of half of that uh, parabola, uh, that, that arc, and then we just multiply that by half to give us what percentage that is along the full arc, okay? Um, and then because we have a value between 0 and 1 um, that is our throw percent, we're going to put that into uh, the sine function, and that's going to bring us back... Um, a, a value to multiply um, our z by to give us that arc. All right, so that's how throw start percent works. Uh, throw percent itself is therefore going to equal uh, throw start percent, and that's what we're going to increase towards one um, with this uh, with this entity to give us our final destination. Um, direction is going to equal other dot direction. It's just going to inherit. Um, the player's direction. Um, x start is going to equal x, and y start is going to equal y. Um, I can't remember why that's important, but it's presumably important. Oh, right, <laughs> I, I do remember why that's important. <laughs> Sorry, I wrote some of these scripts a while ago, and I, I'm sometimes remembering on the fly how they work. Um, x start and y start. So normally these values contain the x and y the instance had when it was created but you can actually modify them, which can be useful just for um, niche things. Um, basically just to then start treating them as a variable that already has a convenient name, right? Um, X start and Y start. We're just gonna modify those so that we have a variable that maintains the original X position and original Y position of this instance when we started throwing it. That's very useful because then we use that combined with the percentage we are along the throw to determine where we should actually be in the room um, based on uh, how far the throw we are. Okay, and um, that's all we need to actually do to the instance. Outside of the instance, uh, we want to do player act out animation. Uh, that handy script um, <laughs> is very, very useful, uh, this thing. Um, S player lift. Um, we don't need any end script um, in there for this one. We, we literally just want the player to perform the lift animation because, yeah, the, the lift animation is literally just like 
this, right? So it kind of vaguely looks like the throw as much as it looks like the lift, right? Um, so I'm just conveniently using that. If you have your own throw animation, you want to obviously put that in there instead. Um, and then global dot I lifted, of course, needs to equal no one. All right, so that's our player throw script. Sets everything up that we need to actually make um, an instance be thrown. The final thing we have to do now, or certainly not the, the least thing we have to do now, is uh, come to P entity again, go to the end step, and we're gonna maximize this because we've got plenty of code to write in here. And in the, this entity loop, this is where we're gonna write out the logic uh, for what should happen if uh, this instance is being thrown. So we already have a section here that says if lifted and uh, the player exists, um, then, then do all of this stuff. Um, since that's got an and uh, instance exists here, we're not going to else this. We're just going to write a separate one underneath that says if not lifted. Uh, okay, and there might be other things we want to do if the, the uh, instance is not lifted, so we won't end this with uh, being thrown. Instead, we will just write another if statement inside here that just says if thrown. We will comment this as well, I guess. Uh, be thrown. Um, if th well, we'll just write yeah, be thrown. Well, I was going to write be thrown if thrown, but that's a bit weird. Um, so if thrown. Throw distance traveled is going to equal the smallest, so min, out of throw distance traveled plus three um, throw distance. Okay, so I'm gonna move three pixels um, towards uh, our total throw distance um, every single frame. I'm just realizing, I think we've doubled up on our variables there. I think that could just be entity throw distance rather than, <laughs> we put throw distance, we, we made equal the entity throw distance that we define in the entities uh, and yet, um, we're just using that in the same way. I don't know why we made this variable rather than just using entity throw distance. I don't think it gets modified at any point, but uh, whatever. <laughs> As I said, no part of the script is going to be perfect. Um, we decided to get some of these episodes out rather than spending ages perfecting them. Anyway, uh, so throw distance traveled is going to equal the smallest out of either itself plus three or throw distance which is the maximum distance we're going to actually travel okay and that's what stops us overshooting uh, our, our destination and then x is going to equal x start which we modified to be where the object was at the start of the throw plus length de x uh, throw distance traveled uh, direction and y is going to equal y start plus length the uh, y throw distance travel direction. Same thing again, okay? And that just adds the x component and the y component that we need uh, to move this amount in this direction, okay? Simple as that. Then we're going to do a very, very cheap collision, uh, which is just to say if uh, tile map get at pixel uh, collision map. Um, which I believe entities all have access to. Have we done this in here? Room start. Yes, we did. Okay, yeah, in room start we got access to the collision map, so entities have that. Um, so, so if uh, we find a collision on that collision map at our current x and y after moving, um, that's greater than zero. Um, uh-oh, pause the video for a second. It looks like Sean has made another serious mistake that he won't notice until probably the last few minutes of recording this video. Um, this line, I've, I've not put the brackets in the right place and it should actually look like this, as you can see, with a bracket after the Y. Um, rather than me writing Y greater than zero, it should be that whole function greater than zero. Um, but I forgot to put that bracket in there. In fact, you in a minute you'll see me put an extra bracket on the end convinced I have fixed the issue, and uh, I have not. I do come back to fixing it later, but I figured I would share, uh, save you the pain <laughs> of having to come along on that mistake with me. So put that little bracket in there. It's a really frustrating one because at a glance it looks like a perfectly normal line I've written there, even though it's obviously totally wrong if you look at it for more than a second. <sighs> Well, what can you do? These things happen. Anyway, that's what you. This is the line you actually need to write, as you can see it on the screen. Hope that's clear. Sorry about that. Let's move on. Throne 
equal false and uh, grav is going to equal 0.1. So grav is going to stand for gravity and that's going to be something we'll set if um, if for any reason an entity is above uh, zero z, okay, so it's like floating in the air, it needs to fall back down to the ground, okay, like it's not being, like it's not mid throw or any other thing that might be modifying its z, but it's just like kind of hovering in the air and needs to like fall down to the earth, we'll use grab to do that, okay. Um, and that's if we like, so we throw something into a wall, it gets like halfway through its arc, hits a wall, it's just going to go boof, and then like drop down to the earth, okay? Oh yeah, make sure to put the bracket on the end of there. Um, I constantly forget that when I write if short if statements, um, because I tend to open a bracket at the start and I always forget to close it. Make sure you do. The next line we're going to write, and I'll explain it afterwards, is throw percent equals throw start percent plus lerp open bracket zero comma one minus throw start percent comma uh, throw distance traveled divided by throw distance close bracket semicolon well as I said well how we're gonna do the throw is to work out we need to work out a percentage that we are through the throw so we know how we already worked out the distance right we, we've thrown we're, we're already moving in a straight line in whichever direction that we're throwing it okay that we're, we're moving along that that's fine but we want to know how high the object should be in the arc that we're trying to make okay and to do that we want to work out how far through the throw we are and uh, put that into like a sine wave or whatever to give us kind of um, the position in the arc so we're setting throw percent to equal whatever our starting percent is, which is whenever we do percentages in code, we're always working between a number between naught and one, okay, like a decimal value, 0.5 being a half and so on. Okay, so we have like say 0.2 or 0.4 or whatever number this worked out as as that position in our arc that's that's here, right? Um, we have that plus some value between that and one. Um, based on how far we've actually traveled, okay? So we want um, a value between naught, uh, because this is a value we're adding on to this, okay? We want a value between naught and one minus throw start percent. So say that this was 0.2, um, this would therefore be 0.8. Um, so we want a value between naught and 0.8 to add on to our 0.2. To give us ultimately a value between 0.2 and 1, right? Um, that is throw distance traveled divided by throw distance, okay? So between 52 that we're trying to travel, say we're up to 30 or whatever, and that gives us a percentage that we are through that. And then that returns as a value between uh, 0 and 0.8 or whatever um, based on that percentage. Hopefully that made sense. Um, I find it quite difficult to explain that type of thing, um, but I did the best I could. <laughs> okay, so now that we have that throw percentage, what we can do is put it into um, a sign function. So I'm going to set z to equal uh, throw peak height, that's the very top, um, multiplied by uh, sign, <laughs> not s a g n, but s i n, sign. Um, throw percent multiplied by pi okay so we've done this before with the, the throw bonk and creating that kind of um, arc um, so obviously a pi is like one complete um, moving between naught uh, minus one and uh, sorry between naught one and one again so that's why we just do whatever the throw percentage is uh, which is between 0 0.2 and one somewhere right we multiply that uh, by pi and then put it into sign to give us um, and, and then multiply that by the peak height uh, um, to give us the exact height we want to be along our arc. Okay, all right, so that's us successfully actually uh, moving in that arc. We now need to actually bring it to a close once we're finished. So if throw a distance equals throw a distance traveled. We know it will equal it exactly because of our min statement up there. 
Um, so if that's the case, uh, thrown is going to equal false. And then if entity throw break happens to be true, uh, instance destroy. Let's check a couple of these. What's this? Uh, throw percent. Oh, we need to capitalize this. Thank you. Yellow warning. That's saying grab only. Yeah, we haven't referenced grab. That's fine. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. So at the end of the throw, set throw to be false. Um, and if we need to break the entity, break the entity. All right. Then. Okay. So if uh, none of this is relevant at all because thrown isn't true anymore. Um, so if we're not lifted and also not being thrown, uh, then that's where our grav value is going to come into play. So let's just get rid of some of this weird extra white space I always add. Uh, fall back to earth if above zero z. So if z greater than zero and we're not being thrown and uh, we're not being lifted either, um, then z is going to equal max, so whichever is bigger, out of z minus grav uh, or zero. Uh, grav is also going to increase over time so that it falls faster and faster towards the earth. Um, if z is zero and entity uh, throw break instance destroy, I suppose it's possible you might want to have the instance destroy itself uh, on contact with the wall. So you might want to do that here. I'll leave that up to you. That's just how I happen to write it. Um, else, uh, grav equals uh, 0.1 again. Okay, so that's always going to be our base gravity. The reason we set it up here is basically to reset it from whatever it might have been before. Okay, so we don't constantly get the gravity increasing, increasing every time we throw a thing. Okie doke. Um, and that's it, I think. I think that's everything. Let's find out. Let's run the game. <laughs> that's the way we find out. There is a bug with this, I should point out, which we'll see happen in a minute. Oh. Okay. Um, so there's an issue uh, right off the bat. Um, we can throw the thing, but it appears to just not go anywhere. Why would that be? Okay, so some of you might have spotted this earlier and were very, very confused. In fact, I'm sure I'll put something in the video editing to uh, kind of clarify this mistake at the time just to save you a bit of time. Um, but the problem is this line. Um, it, it could take a bit of looking at it closely to work out exactly what I've done wrong here. But uh, I'm doing y greater than zero here rather than the if this this function is greater than zero. I've made a big point of making sure this extra bracket was in place, uh, but that's not actually where the bracket should be. The bracket should be here. <laughs> okay, so this is in p entity in the section in in the end step, right where we're doing the if not lifted bit. Um, if tile map get our pixel collision map uh, x y not x y greater than zero so that was going back it, for whatever reason uh, that was returning um, uh, some positive number which meant that this was just instantly triggering and uh, the instance wasn't going anywhere okay um, yeah okay so this works now this does now properly work um, but it is, it's not perfect, um, and that's because there's something we've done that's generally not very perfect um, that uh, we're going to probably try and fix in the next episode because it's been causing a few problems, I think, um, and it's something we need to address, which is at the moment you'll notice we can't, oh, okay, every now and again we can throw up, depending on just if we get lucky with positioning, uh, but you'll notice most of the time... Um, um, especially if you're like against a wall or something like that and holding holding up like a pressing space and I just cannot seem to throw. Okay, that's obviously a problem. That's a, a pretty annoying bug. You'll also notice if I throw this like into um, into the grass here, sometimes it become very hard, if not impossible, to uh, actually pick up uh, this instance. And that's to do with how we're detecting things to activate, okay? Uh, we just literally pick a spot and we're going, um, that instance, it doesn't have an activate script, and if we overlap an instance entirely with another one, like, right now when I'm pressing space on this thing, it's constantly just finding the, um, the leaves underneath it. Like, I think if I break that, now, I, yeah, now I can pick up the pot, right? Um, 
And you'll notice like just that that one spot we're checking is also just not super accurate and sometimes we just roll through things quite a lot when it looks like we should you know be able to talk to a person or anything like that. So it's not perfect. And the other thing that's, you know, the, the thing that's causing this bug is we're doing um, pressing space and we're looking for an instance to activate and it's finding the pot that we're carrying and being like, okay, well, we can't activate it because we're already carrying it or whatever. But then it's skipping over the the uh, the um, the functionality for us to actually throw the object. And there's a bunch of ways for us to fix that, but I think the best fix for us um, will be to uh, change the way we activate entities. I think what we did was fine for teaching a bunch of the other stuff um, that came along with it, but now we're gonna, I think in the next part, we're probably gonna just look at making that a little bit better. Um, we've already gone off script a whole bunch for this since I originally wrote it, so uh, what's the harm in making it a little bit better still, all right? So that's probably gonna be episode 23. Don't know exactly when it'll be out because I'm still busy doing a bunch of other things. Um, but um, I'll try and keep you all up to date on that. Anyway, thank you for watching this, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Sorry about the gaps that's been between, but we will get through all this stuff. Um, making a point of doing it whenever I can. And uh, yeah, that's everything. Thanks, guys. And we'll catch you all next time. Thank you, everybody, for all your support and for putting up with the slower than usual release of content. Thank you in particular. Super special thanks to all of my supporters over on Patreon.com. Huge shout out in particular and in no particular order to the following. Samuel Wazier, Andrew Gilbert, Kaiser Ho, Flaming Ewoks, Carter Green, Justin Adega, Alex Schenkel, Goose, Joram Pater, John Harwood, Zach Collar, Figgy, Relentless Rex, Cabbage Pants, Tyler Hubble, Leo, Scott Matthews, Mark Burgess, Samir Nyalagaglo, Rene Dam, Zephyr Flame, Rupinder, Hare, Dark Rider 0318, Jason, James L. Anderson, James Siggins, Do What Doobie, Hyungjin, Bertie T, Daka Dondigo, Robert Churches, Bowser the Dog, and Max M. Thank you all ever so much, and thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.